Welcome to this screencast on using OneNote as a documentation tool. This is video two in a two-part series. So let's take a look at where we've been in some of the past videos. So I'm just here on the FlipPL website and I'll go into some videos that I've been making for our professional learning here in Upper Canada. You'll notice I do have um, a mirror of my iPhone off to the right hand side. We're going to get to that in just a little while. Okay, so just a quick recap. So on this website there are some videos concerning Microsoft OneNote. So uh, in series two, the first one, video one, was about getting started and how to set up OneNote folders on your desktop. Uh, now video two which has two parts. So part one focused on pedagogical documentation, so a quick overview. Uh, we went back and reviewed page templates from the first video, made some connections to pedagogy, and then looked at designing uh, a page template that could serve as a documentation, documentation tool. So this video, part two, it's a very short topic outline, but really we're looking at the following. We are looking at using devices while documenting. So specifically, I have in front of me now um, a Dell Venue tablet. So it's a two-in-one, so it functions as a tablet and also as a laptop. And I have an iPhone. So I do have a smartphone that's here uh, that you can also use. So I'll be featuring uh, an iPhone as well as the Dell Venue. So let's get started. And to start things up, off, I think it would be appropriate for us to go back and take a quick look at a page template that we had created. So I'm just going to expand upon this a little bit more. I'm just going to take it to full screen. Now remember last time we had discussed setting up a table as such. So we'll focus on up here at the top, uh, importantly, um, are your learning goals as well as your success criteria. So those that you're going to anticipate and co-create if you are using inquiry-based learning. Uh, below is just a simple table where you can list your class uh, student names, your class list, your documentation would be wherever you're putting notes, um, pictures, video, audio clips, etc. Um, observations where you can provide um, you know, just your own written notes as to what it is that you specifically saw or heard and then using the tool later on as a means of uh, determining feedback, so descriptive feedback for your students. So let's just collapse this a little bit. Okay, and what I'd like to do is two things. So one, uh, I'll show you here something that I was working on. So I took the template, let me expand this a little bit more. I took the template and I modified it for a data management task. In fact, it was more of a culmination of several lessons in a classroom. And it was in a grade 2-3 split class. Um, we have a learning goal or a big idea. Uh, we have a task where they were going to use some technology to represent uh, survey data and then read and make inferences based on that. So inferences are made in grade 3. Grade 2, um, reading and describing the data. Success criteria, these were ones that I had anticipated. Um, and also the thought about how I would best collect evidence of success or that those criteria were met in terms of over here you can see we have conversations C, observations O and product P. Okay, so those are all identified. Now upon the actual task being done in the classroom setting, okay, so over here I have my focus students, so just a first initial and here you can see I started out by capturing an image. Okay, so I captured all the images and then I went back in and started to tag each situation or each student's work and thinking with what I saw specifically. Okay, so that was one thing that I did here and having some comfort with where they've been in terms of their work. So having many opportunities to observe, I was then able to go in and check off those criteria. Okay, of course some students did not display all of them and that means that when we get back into 
just show you here. Uh, the interpretation, so I've added a column into my planner, so an interpretation of the documentation, my observations, and then the plan of feedback. So what descriptive feedback am I going to apply? Where's the student going to apply? And then define what those next steps are so that the student can then have another opportunity to demonstrate those criteria. Okay, so ideally what I'm looking to do is through varied experiences is to come back and then with the student is to check those criteria off. So that's just a rundown of what uh, this template had been used for. But if we want to get to the technicality of it all, I'm just going to check my recording time here quickly. About five minutes, which is great. So in terms of the technical side, so if I was using where I am now, my two-in-one or my Dell tablet, um, just put in a couple of initials. So let's say that uh, we're going to be observing TE. And as TE is working along, I've, I do have some options. Okay, so uh, we'll take it out of full screen. And in OneNote, so notice here in the insert bar, we have record audio and record video. Okay, so once you set up your, um, your recording, Okay, or your camera, whether it be front-facing um, or facing you, that is in terms of capturing you, um, you can record a video, and that video will insert here. Okay, you can also record audio. So for instance, with my cursor in that particular uh, cell, I say record audio. So you'll see it is recording audio now. Okay, and if I stop, I could then play that back. So you'll see it is recording audio now. Okay. And if I stop. Okay, so there you have some audio. Same thing with video. If you were to record video, then that uh, file would be stored right within your OneNote. Okay, so those are a couple of options. Along with that, so you've got your audio, you have your video, you can also insert pictures. So. The thing with this, though, is you need to take the picture first and then access your pictures. Okay, so if I want to insert that picture, it's going to direct me to, most likely, the camera roll. So whatever I have in my camera roll, so I'd have to open that roll up, unless I change the default to point to a different place for storing those pictures, click on the picture, open it, and then it would insert directly into that cell. Okay, so that really is the lengthiest process. So the, the one function that requires a lot of steps is inserting the pictures. Okay, uh, but otherwise inserting video and audio, very straightforward. And of course, you can have students dictate. Okay, so we can do a speech to text. So I'll we'll show you that as well. So under learning tools, so let's say that I'm going to record for GA and uh, over here. I'll go into my learning tools and we do have a dictation feature so let's try that out let's dictate in English let's see I'm getting a, an indication that I need to sign in to access those tools okay so be that I'm recording at home as opposed to school so definitely you can do that so the immersive reader as well as the dictation tool are excellent so it does dictate well and it does um, read back quite well as also. Okay, so it's a fantastic tool. And of course you can type your own notes in or have a student type in some notes as well. So that's the Dell venue. Now, oftentimes one might find that when you're using a laptop that it could be a bit cumbersome, maybe a little tedious for some functions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mirror through a particular app called Reflector I'm going to mirror my iPhone, and there's the iPhone now. Okay, so here's the iPhone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go right to, oops, sorry about that, i got my Twitter feed. Um, I'll go into the OneNote, and I'll show you. I'll just take a moment for it to load. Okay. I'll get out of that. So, 
but in terms of notebooks, so let me go into the notebook that I am using to keep track of some of these things. So you, oh, let me open this one here. So here it is. You can see this is the same, the very same OneNote that I just showed you. And if you take a look, there is, there's that audio file. So I can actually play that audio file right here on my phone. Okay, so that's, that's very cool. <laughs> Okay, so let's say that, okay, let's go back for GA. Now for GA, what I'm going to do is show you some different things that you can do. So you can insert the photo right from your phone. So if I go to picture, you can take a picture, okay, or you can take one from your library. So we'll go to the library and I'll just grab a photo from one of our RMS days. Um, so here are the learning partners doing some work so we can crop that photo we can go ahead and just use it directly and then over here cursoring in you can put in your observations so direct observations no interpretation that will come later on so we could do that um, let's say that we're going to look at uh, WH okay so we're going to record some observations there uh, so over here putting my cursor in the documentation panel I can do the following. I can record audio here as well. So I am now recording audio for student WH. So I can stop the recording and I can then play that back as well. Okay, so again, very cool. So there's picture, there's audio. Okay, we can also just type directly in. Okay, we can do that. But also notice that here, let me get my mouse, is with the iPhone and with other devices, if I press that, I can dictate. I'm going to record a dictation. Okay, so there we have, I'm going to record a dictation, so that's done. So there I have documentation for another student. Okay, so we'll just say that student A, B. Perfect. Now, one other thing. Let's say I want to record a video. Okay, so student S, SR, okay. Now the thing with the phone, okay, so unlike the two in one, unlike my tablet, I could record the audio directly in, I could record the video directly in, although I didn't click on it, but I could have done that as well. The only cumbersome piece was getting that photo put in. On the other hand, with the phone, Okay, what you'll find is quick and easy is you can totally do the audio. You can get that in quickly and quite easily. The photos go in wonderfully and you can crop them and put features into them uh, right on the phone or from the phone. The one thing you can't do directly is video. Okay, so that's the trade-off. So each device has a trade-off. It all depends on your comfort level, how you like to develop uh, your sense of efficiency, uh, how you develop a flow in terms of what you're recording. So with the video, if you really are looking to use your phone for that, what you would do, okay, and this is just one way, and I, it's kind of the only way that I've determined at this point in time. So you can see here I've got, okay, I'm going to take a quick video of my screen. So it's just a few seconds here, five seconds worth. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that video, okay? Pressing on the up arrow, I'm going to go to OneDrive. Okay, so I am using OneNote, so I have the Office 365 suite of tools. So I'm going to pick a folder, okay? So I'm going to go into Teaching and Learning folder, and I created a folder for screencasts. So I'm going to upload that screencast there. Can see that it is uploading. Okay, so that's one way to do it. So you could create a series of folders within OneDrive okay, for your classes and then add those videos in. The issue though comes with in order to tag those videos you would have to go back in and add perhaps the student's name or the class information to the title of that particular file. Okay, something you might consider doing, okay, differently. 
Okay, let me just get, uh, I'll just move this phone over here. Something that you might consider doing differently is the following. So, where was I? Yes, okay. So once that video has been uploaded, I'd rather have all of the information right in OneNote. So right in this space here, right in real time, it's already sorted out. I know for which student that video applies. So let me go into back to OneDrive. So in OneDrive, I can go to that folder, and in that folder, I have my screencasts. So this video, I can then copy the link to it. I'll go back to OneNote, and then within OneNote, I can paste the link directly in that link is active so I can open it immediately and I'll have access to that video and I can play it right here okay. all right so I'm just going to turn the phone off here for now and I'll move this off to the side so that is in a nutshell how you can use your laptop and or your smartphone to help you capture documentation. Okay, so let's head back to the FlipPL website for a moment. So last but not least, um, if you do have any questions, okay, you know, email me directly. Uh, but I also do have a contact form. You fill the form out and let me know what it is that you would like to see for future video. If you have any questions or comments, then by all means, send that message along and I'll respond to it in, in as timely a manner as I can and to help you to continue with your just-in-time learning. So thank you very much for watching and uh, best wishes on your use of OneNote as a documentation tool in your classroom.